Good afternoon, and welcome to the Word of Truth, a program that's designed to help you understand your Bibles. My name is Brother Obadiah, and I'll be your teacher today. And reading for me will be Brother Steve. And as always, we bring you a topic from the scriptures on this TV program. And today's topic will be, be holy and acceptable before God. Be holy and acceptable before God. Because this is, as servants of God, this is how we have to walk before the Lord at all times. The Lord uh, commanded Israel in the days of old, he said, be ye therefore holy, for I am holy. And the Lord laid out some guidelines on how you should walk holy. And this is what we have to do if we have any hope of obtaining the kingdom of God. We must be holy and we must do and we must, uh, our actions and our thoughts must, must be acceptable unto the Lord. And throughout this lesson, we're going to find out how it is that we can do this. But first, we want to find out what it is that we should not do. So we're going to pick it up in Proverbs 14, and we're going to read verse 12. Proverbs 14, and we're going to read verse 12. Go ahead. There's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Because everybody, each and one of us, have our own personal thoughts on what we uh, perceive to be right and wrong. But then the Lord has his guidelines on what is right and wrong. And when it comes to serving the God of Israel, you must do what he uh, uh, calls you to do, what he says is right and wrong. That is how you have to live. But he said there's a way to seem right unto a man, but those ways are unto death because some of the things that we think is right, they are not right with God. And those things will cause you to go against the commandments of God, and they will eventually, if you keep doing them, end up to you dying. So the Lord said there's a way to seem right unto a man, but those ways are only going to equal up to death. So we cannot do this. We have to deal with the scriptures. This is why we teach the commandments of God. This is why we read so many scriptures at the house of Jacob, because we are not teaching what we feel. We are teaching what the Lord had written in his book. Now, let's go to Ezekiel 33, and we're going to pick it up at 13. Ezekiel 33, and we're going to pick it up at verse 13. Go ahead, brother. When I should say to the righteous that he should surely live, if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, and all his righteousness should not be remembered. For his iniquity that he have committed he shall die for it. See, the Lord, the ones who are righteous, the Lord have promised you, hey, that you're going to live as long as you're walking in righteousness. And the ones who walk in sin and iniquity, if you don't turn, then you will eventually, you're going to die. But he said, if I say unto the righteous, he should surely live. But now if he turn around and he started to trust in his own righteousness, not the righteousness of God, but he trusted in his own righteousness. Then he said, uh, 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 and commit iniquity. He say for that iniquity, he going to die because you cannot trust in your own righteousness. You have to deal with the righteousness that the Lord has set up. And so if you do that, you will be okay. But once we start to deal with what we want to do what comes to our mind and start dealing with our own righteousness, then what comes after that is iniquity. Now, let's go and see a good example of this. Let's go to Ezekiel 28 and 11, because we want to look at somebody who the Lord said was perfect when they was created. But then they fell off because they started to do, this individual started to do what he felt like doing. And he stopped doing the will of God. Ezekiel 28 and verse 11. Go ahead. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him. Now this king of Tyrus, this is not a physical man. This is talking about Satan. But we know, if you have any understanding, that Satan's name was Lucifer, which means light bearer, which means he knew the truth. But he chose to reject the truth and he tried to come up with his own program and the Lord cast him down. Then he became known as Satan or the destroyer or whatever, but he didn't start off that way. Like we just read, if the Lord say to the righteous, he going to live, but then he starts to deal with his own righteousness and commit iniquity for that. He going to die. Go ahead. 
Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sellest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Because he was full of wisdom, because he understood, he had knowledge, he was full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You can have all the knowledge in the world, brothers and sisters, but if you don't exercise that knowledge, that knowledge is no good to you. You can understand the word of God, you can understand all kinds of scriptures, but if you don't live the scriptures, then all you're doing is putting yourself in a bad position because the word of God is a double-edged sword. That same word, if you keep it, you're going to live forever. But that same word, if you don't keep it, it's going to cause you to go to the lake of fire. It's a double-edged sword. So he said you was full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Go ahead. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Now, you know there wasn't no physical man, king of Tyrus, because he wasn't in no Eden. He is talking about Satan. Go ahead. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the oxen, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Uh -huh. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. He was an anointed cherub angel that covereth. Go ahead. And I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou was walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy way from the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. See, the Lord said you was perfect in the day that you were created until iniquity was found in you. Once the Lord finds iniquity in you, then you are no longer walking righteous. You are no longer being walking blameless or holy before him. Now you in trouble. When iniquity is found in a man now, you are not dealing with the will of God. Go ahead. 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, thou have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering chap, from the midst of the stones of fire. Uh -huh. Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of, of thy brightness. He said, see, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. He said, thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. See, he, 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 was, he had so much wisdom and, and he was so, his beauty was so great that he thought he was even bigger than his own creator. And that is the same attitude that a lot of men have. They have so much wealth or, or they have so much wisdom, so much worldly wisdom, then they think that, hey, I don't need God. Or some men even think that they are gods. Just look back throughout history. You had a lot of kings and a lot of emperors and everything calling themselves, making themselves to be gods. Because they, they, they felt like, hey, I'm a ruler. I rule this whole land, so I'm God. But that comes from Satan. That's why Paul even said, hey, knowledge puffeth up. Some brothers get, and sisters get knowledge and they can't take it. They get knowledge and then all of a sudden they all puffed up. But the knowledge, the little knowledge you got, a whole lot of other people got, got that same knowledge. All of us that study this book and keep the commandments of God, we had the same knowledge. That's right. I ain't no better than this brother because I got some knowledge of the Bible. He got the same knowledge. But Satan, this is what he did. And if you follow, and if you do the same thing, then you are following his example. He said, man, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You done corrupted your wisdom by reason of your brightness. You cannot allow that to happen. You have to constantly keep yourself in check and deal with what the Lord deems to be righteous and holy and not lean to your own understanding. Finish that verse. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before king that they may behold thee. And that is what the Lord is going to do to them. And he's going to cast anybody else down that deal with their own righteousness and not deal with the righteousness that he set up. This is about serving the God of Israel. This ain't about serving ourselves. This ain't about doing what we feel is happy. If you're going to get in the kingdom, you have to deal with the word of God. Now, let's go to uh, Romans 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Romans 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. I just want to make it clear that you cannot serve God according to how you feel. You can't serve God according to what you think is right in your heart. The Lord didn't tell you to do that. He said, obey my voice. 
He constantly told people, obey my voice, keep my commandments, my statutes, my laws and my judgments. Why would he give us all these laws and commandments and turn around and let you serve him according to your own understanding? It is not so. Go ahead. Romans 10 and verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Uh -huh. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God but not according to knowledge. And Israel is the same way today. We have a zeal of God, but it is not according to the knowledge of God. We serve God for the most part according to the doctrine of men. It is not according to what's written in the scriptures. You can plainly read things in the scriptures that you shouldn't do, but people turn around all the time and they do them. And they say that the Lord is okay with that. Go ahead. Verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves into the righteousness of God. And that's what happens. When you are not uh, knowledgeable of God's righteousness, then the only thing you can do is come up with your own righteousness. He said, but they uh, 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 being ignorant of God's righteousness, they go about and establish their own program. But when you do that, you are not submitting yourselves into the righteousness of the God, which is what the Lord requires. Now, let's go to Ephesians 5 and pick it up at 13. Ephesians 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 13. Because the Lord has never wanted to keep man in the darkness about what his plan was and, and, and how you were supposed to live. That's why the Lord preserved the words of this book over thousands of years and it's preserved to this day so that in this generation we can have the opportunity to get eternal life Ephesians 5 and pick it up at verse 13 go ahead but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light for whatsoever does make manifest is light wherefore he saith Awake, that thou, that thou sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Uh -huh. See then that you walk circ circ circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. See, don't walk as fools, but be wise. That's why he is saying, hey, awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead. You need to arise from your spiritual death. You need to wake up and understand the word of God. He said, don't walk as fools, but be wise. Go ahead. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Uh -huh. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. He said, don't be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. This is the whole problem. Nobody wants to know what the will of the Lord is. They want to they want to hear what the good, smooth words that the preacher is saying, and they want to go with that. Because the majority of so-called preachers, they're not going to tell you you got to keep the commandments of God. They're going to tell you. For the most part, you wait on your blessings, call upon the name of the Lord. And you're going to be saved. And like, that's the whole story. But that's not the whole story. You better understand what the will of the Lord is, because if you don't know it, then how could you follow God and you don't know his will? If this brother give me instructions to do something according to what he want me, how he wants me to do it, if I don't follow his instructions, then I'm not following his, his will for that particular uh, uh, thing. I'm not following his guidelines. So me and him, we not on the same page. Same thing with the Lord. The Lord laid out some guidelines and commandments. And if you don't follow the guidelines, then you're not walking with God. You're walking according to your own understanding to what you want to do. But don't be unwise, but you better understand what the will of the Lord is because your own salvation depends on it. You can only save yourself. Now, let's go to Romans 12 and pick it up at verse 1. Let's start to look at some of the ways that the Lord uh, uh, described serving him because the Lord uses a lot of different ways to describe walking as a servant of God. And we're going to look at one of these ways right now. Romans 12, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, 
which is your reasonable service. He said, now present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. This is how we are supposed to be presenting ourselves as a living sacrifice. Go ahead. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't be conformed to the world. If you're doing everything according to the way the world is set up, then you're not doing it according to the way the Lord set up. Go ahead. That you may prove what is prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It is, it is by the renewing of your mind. You cannot think the same way you have always thought. You have to stop thinking like someone of the world and have to start thinking like a servant of God. Then you can do that perfect will of God. But we have to all present ourselves as a living sacrifice. Now, let's go and look and let's see uh, how the Lord uh, commanded the people to, to uh, 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 when they brought up, you know, sacrifices for their vows and offerings, what kind of sacrifice they had to bring up. And this will give us a picture of how we should be. Let's go to uh, Leviticus 22 and 18. Leviticus 22 and 18. We want to look at an actual physical sacrifice of, of an animal. And it's going to show us how we should be living sacrifices. Leviticus 18. I'm sorry, Leviticus 22. And we're going to pick it up at verse 18. Go ahead. Speak unto Aaron and to his sons and unto all the children of Israel and say unto them, Whatsoever he be of the house of Israel, or of the strangers in Israel. See, Israel or the strangers that were in Israel. It, 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 hey, it was one law for all. For Israel or for the stranger, this is what they had to do. Go ahead. That will offer his oblation for all his vows and for all his free will offerings, which they will offer unto the Lord for a burnt offering. You shall offer at your own with the male without blemish, of the bees, of the sheep, of the goats. But whatsoever have a blemish, that shall you not offer, for it should not be acceptable for you. He said, now you can offer it from the bees or the sheep or the goats. He said, but it cannot have a blemish. Can't have a blemish. Go ahead. And whosoever offereth a sacrifice of peace offering to the Lord to accomplish his vow, or free will offering in bees or sheep, it should be perfect to be accepted. There should be no blemish therein. In order for it to be accepted by God, it had to be perfect. Physically, it had to be perfect. It could not have a blemish. This was an actual sacrifice for a vow or a peace offering or whatever. It had to be perfect. It had to be without blemish in order for the Lord to accept it. But that's painting a picture when we just read uh, the Apostle Paul say, present yourselves a living sacrifice. So that lets me know that if I'm going to be a living sacrifice, then I cannot be, I cannot do whatever I want to do. I have to walk before the Lord without blemish. I have to be blameless, holy, in order to be acceptable. Just like those animals had to be without blemish and they had to be perfect, I got to try to be the same way in order to be a living sacrifice because that's the kind of sacrifice that the Lord accepts. He accepts sacrifices that are without blemish and perfect. Now, let's go to uh, 1 Peter 2, 1 Peter, the second chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 1 Peter, the second chapter, and verse 1. Go ahead. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking. See, we have to lay all these things aside, especially as brothers and sisters in Christ. We can't do it. We, we, we're not supposed to do these things. We have to start dealing with each other in love. Go ahead. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. Desire the sincere milk of the word. Desire to know the basics first. People want to jump out and try to learn some secret things that don't nobody else in the whole world know but you. But the Lord said, desire the sincere milk. You cannot grow in understanding until you start with the basics until you start with the blood of Jesus, the Ten Commandments, start with the basics, then the Lord will uh, increase your understanding on other things. But we have to desire the sincere milk that you can grow. Go ahead. 
If so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Uh -huh. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house uh -huh. and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. He said to offer up spiritual sacrifices. But I know what a sacrifice has to be in order to be accepted. So these spiritual sacrifices, they got to be holy, undefiled, without blemish. You can't offer up any old thing to the Lord, whether it was a physical sacrifice or your spiritual sacrifice. You have to offer up and stand before the Lord and be blameless, undefiled, without blemish, and try to walk perfect. Now, let's go to uh, Hebrews 9 and pick it up at verse 1, because we want to see you know, why Paul and, and why Peter are, are comparing our walk to spiritual sacrifices. Because those physical sacrifices that were done under, under the uh, 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 Levi, they never could take away sin. They never did really help the one who had to bring up his offering. That is why the Lord said that he had no pleasure in the blood of bulls and goats. Hebrews 9 and verse 1, go ahead. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinance of divine service in a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made. The first when was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded in the tables of in the tables of the covenant. Uh -huh. And over it the cherubims of glory shadow in the mercy seat of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. And we know, hey, the, the, the high priest on the Day of Atonement, he went behind that veil, and he made an atonement for the sins of all the people. But that was pointing to the time where the true sacrifice would be made, which was the body of Christ. Go ahead. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, whereas the first tabernacle was yet standing, uh -huh. which was a figure for the time then present, and which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect, as pertaining to the conscience. See, it said he couldn't make the one that did it perfect as pertaining to the conscience. We just read where the Lord said an animal had to be without blemish. It had to be perfect to be accepted. But he's saying those sacrifices that they did all the time, no, they couldn't make the ones who was doing them, it couldn't make them perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Because you don't really have a mind to repent as long as you have an animal to go off of. But now that you can't offer no animal up, when you sin, your sin is on you. And you walking around, and if you fear God in any kind of way, you know it's something coming. But under, the, under that old covenant, offering up animals for sin, as long as you got the bull, as long as you got the goat, as long as you got that lamb to go offer, you was good. But it is not so now. Now you can't offer up no physical sacrifice for your sin. You got to present your own body as a living sacrifice. You got to offer up spiritual sacrifices. You have to walk right before the Lord. Now, let's go to uh, Isaiah 1 and pick it up uh, at verse 11. Isaiah 1 and verse 11. Because the Lord allowed them, he set up this sin offering, this sacrifice for sin, because the people, they kept sinning. And the Lord knew, hey, that they were going to sin in ignorance. So the Lord set this up. But then as time went on, Israel just totally abused it to the point where the Lord said, man, I don't, I don't even want to deal. I don't even want you to bring this up to me no more. Isaiah 1 and 11. Go ahead. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I'm full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks 
or of lambs or of he goats. But he told them to do it. But they did it so much that they was just leaning on sacrificing animals instead of being righteous. They just leaning on the fact that I'm just going to go up here and, and bring my sacrifice and, that's gonna, and my sin going to be forgiven. He said, so why are you bringing all this up to me? He said, I'm tired of all these burnt offerings and stuff you bringing up to me because you're not trying to be right. All you doing is just bringing up your animal, you get the, 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 the priest slaying it, and then you going right back to sinning. You ain't changing. But now you got to change the way you live. Because the books say the Lord died once in the end of the world. Lord ain't going to die often. He only died one time. Go ahead. 12. When you come to appear before me, who have required this at your hand to tread my court? Uh-huh. Bring no more vain ob oblations, incense, and an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even a solemn meeting. See these, and, and see people, people see this and say, see, see, you ain't, see, you ain't supposed to do them days. But that is not what the Lord is talking about here. The people were so wicked, they defiled everything that the Lord set up. You a wicked person just because you come and keep the Sabbath day. That don't just that don't make you righteous. If you foul the first six days of the week and you come in here on the seventh day of the week, you still foul. That's right. It don't matter. If you foul all other days of the month and then you come sit at the feast and you ate man and eat food and keep the feast, you ain't changed. You foul. You showing up to the Lord's Sabbath. You showing up to the Lord's high Sabbath and you a foul person. So you are defiling what the Lord have set up. That's why the Lord say, man, I, you know, I came away with all of this because y'all not right. You supposed to appear before me holy and undefiled. Go ahead. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hate it. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. Uh huh. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. He say, see, your hands are full of blood. You can pray to me all day. He say, I ain't, I'm not, I ain't going to hear it because your hands are full of blood. You're going to sin all the time and then going to get down and pray to the Lord like you was righteous. It is not so. Go ahead. Wash you. Make you clean. He said, no, nah, this is what I want you to do. Wash yourself up and be clean. Go ahead. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. See, the Lord wants you to cease to do evil. Lord don't want all these sacrifices and all these, all these other things. The Lord wants you to stop doing evil and turn and serve him. That is what he wants. Now, let's go to Jeremiah 7 and pick it up at verse 21. Because the Lord in the days of Jeremiah, he told the, he told the people the same, same thing. Jeremiah 7 and 21. Because the people always tried to find a way not to keep the commandments of God. Just like now. People deal with the part of the word of God that's pleasing, but then the other stuff they don't want to deal with. Like tithes. Everybody like tithes. But nobody like talking about no thou shall nots. When you start talking about thou shall nots, we don't talk about that. Jeremiah 7 and 21, go ahead. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Put your burnt offerings into your sacrifices and eat flesh. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings and sacrifices. Uh -huh. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. Because that's what the Lord wanted. All he wanted them to do was obey his voice so they could be his God and he be they, uh, 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 they could be his people and he be, and he be a God unto them. Go ahead. And walk ye in, in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. And he said, all, all I wanted you to do was obey my voice. And then I wanted you to walk in all the ways that I commanded you. And it was going to be well unto you. Uh, read verse 24, brother. Uh-huh. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsel and the imagination of their own evil heart. See, they did the thing that the Lord said don't do. They did what was right in their own eyes. He said they wouldn't do what I said. 
but they walked in the council of their own imagination. That's why we read the first scripture. There's a way to seem right unto a man, but those ways, uh, they, they, they lead to death. Because it ain't about what's right to me. I have to deal with what's right according to the Lord. He said they, just, they wouldn't do it. They wanted to walk in the imagination of their, of their own mind instead of dealing with the, the things that I commanded. This is what the Lord has always wanted. He, he has always wanted us to just be obedient. Now, let's go to uh, 1 Samuel 15, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 1 Samuel 15, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Because we want to look at the first king that the Lord, uh, 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 the first king of Israel that the people wanted, which was Saul. And we want to see what Saul did to cause himself to be rejected as king. 1 Samuel 15, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus said the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way, and when he went, excuse me, in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek, and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. So now the Lord said, hey, I remember what Amalek did. So now he, he, uh, 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 he sent Samuel to tell Saul, who was the king, to slay everything. He didn't say save nothing. He said, man, woman, infant, suckling, ox, sheep, camel, and ass. That means animals and people. He said, slay them. This is the Lord. This is the God that everybody say love everybody. But when the Lord get ready to send the war, he get ready to take down, the Lord don't play. He said, everything got to go. Now, let's see if Saul actually did that. Skip down to... Uh, Verse 13, and, and go ahead. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Uh -huh. And Samuel said, What meaning, what meaning thing this bleeding of the sheep in my ears, and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? Now the man going to say, Bless be, the man going to say, Blessed be, be thou the Lord. He said, I don't perform what the Lord have commanded. And Samuel said, If you did that, I come out here to eat sheep. You were supposed to kill everything. You weren't supposed to save no animals. Go ahead. And Saul say, they have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. See, now he now he trying to put it off on the people. Well, you know the people did this, but the Lord set you up as head over these people. You were supposed to make sure that everything was done according to the commandment of God. That's why if you in charge of, uh, of the Lord's house or you in charge of something that the Lord set you over something, it's big responsibility. Go ahead. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord have said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. Uh -huh. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thy own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? Uh -huh. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then thou, didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? Uh -huh. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the, the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me. Now he going to say again. He said, Yeah, I did. He said, I did do what the Lord have said. But he didn't. Go ahead. And have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. So not only did not only did he not destroy all the livestock, now he 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 got the king sitting there. He didn't kill the king right away. Go ahead. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, 
the chief of the thing which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. See, Saul was the king. He was in charge, but he pushed that off on the people. He said, hey, man, the people did that. They the ones that took these sac uh, uh, the the the, uh, 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 the spoil and all of that, and they wanted to sacrifice to the Lord. I guess he thought that that was going to be, you know, that was going to be fine since they wanted to sacrifice. Go ahead. And Samuel said, "Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord?" Of course not. That's the same st the same story throughout the book. The Lord want obedience more than he wants you to send up some burnt offerings and sacrifices. He wanted them to obey, just like he wants us to be obedient. Go ahead. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of ram. He said to obey is better than sacrifice, and to listen, to hearken, than the fat of rams. It's about being obedient unto the commandment of God. That is what the Lord requires. This is how you walk before God, be holy and acceptable. You must be obedient. Stop trying to look for loopholes and ways out of doing the will of God. That's right. Some things, hey, it's going to hurt you to do it. But if you know it's, it's in line with the word of God, hey, you got to bear your cross and you got you to go through with it. You can't keep looking for loopholes because them loopholes don't work. All it's going to do is come back around and bite you because the Lord is going to get you anyway. So you might as well try to do it right the first time. Now, let's go to uh, Psalms 4 and we're going to read verse 5. We're going to go to Psalms 4 and we're going to read verse 5. Psalms 4 and we're going to read verse 5. Go ahead. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. He said, offer the sacrifices of righteousness. This is what the Lord wants. He wants the sacrifices of righteousness. He wants you to present your body as a living sacrifice. He wants you to offer up spiritual sacrifices. He wants you to walk before him in righteousness. Be holy and blameless. Now, let's find out what the Lord commanded our father Abraham to do. Because everybody likes to use Abraham, Abraham's faith as an example of the faith you must have in Christ. And that is true. Abraham was truly faithful. But people never really talk about the other things that Abraham had to do other than him uh, taking Isaac up and, and he was going to offer up Isaac. But Abraham walked in the commandments of God. And we're going to read it. But I, wanna, I, I want you to see what the Lord told Abraham to do when he started to tell Abraham about this covenant that he was going to make with him. Genesis 17 and 1. See, the Lord, when the Lord comes into a covenant with you, he has a part that he's going to perform, and you got a part that you have to perform. The Lord ain't just making the covenant with you and you don't have to do nothing. I don't understand that. You got to deal with your part of the agreement. If you break your part of the agreement, then you have broken the covenant. Watch what he tells Abraham here. Genesis 17 and 1. Go ahead. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thy perfect. He didn't tell Abraham to get no bullock or no sheep and offer it up. He said, I am, I, I am the almighty God. He said, walk before me and be thy perfect. That's what he told Abraham to do. And if the Lord say walk before him and be perfect, then it must be possible for you to be that way. You got to walk before the Lord blameless. And if Abraham, he, if Abraham had to do it, then everybody else that follow after the example of Abraham, you got to walk before the Lord and be perfect. In other words, you got to be blameless. I'm not saying that you ain't going to never make a mistake, but you got to walk and you have to, and you have to try your best to walk in the word of God at all times. 
be a living sacrifice. That sacrifice had to be perfect without blemish. The Lord's requirements are very high, but false teachers have made the Lord's requirements very low. So you don't have to do nothing anymore. But that is not what the Lord has set up. The Lord set it up for, for you. You was going to have to earn salvation. And to this day, you got to earn salvation. Go ahead, brother. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Now, now he's bringing in this covenant. But he told him up front, you walk before me and you be perfect. Go ahead. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. And thou should be a father of many nations. He didn't tell Abraham, hey, all you got to do is believe. And that's fine. Yeah, Abraham's faith was counted unto him as righteousness. Because your faith is a form of being righteous. You first have to believe. But after you believe, you have to do. You got to walk before the Lord and be perfect. Go ahead. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram. But thy name should be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made And thee. then he started talking about this covenant. Now, let's go to Genesis 26. And let's see if Abraham obeyed the voice of the Lord. Because the Lord passed this covenant down to his son Isaac. And he is going to come to Isaac and tell Isaac and extend that covenant through Abraham's son Isaac. And he's going to tell Isaac why he's extending the same covenant unto him. Genesis 26 and verse 1. Go ahead. And there was a famine in the land, beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went up unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerah. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I should tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Now he said, he's telling him, hey, I'm going, uh, I want you to sojourn in this land and I'm going to be with you. And he said, unto you and your, he said, unto your seed, I'm going to give all these countries. He said, I'm going to perform that oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Because see, the Lord is always going to keep his part of the covenant. It is man that has always reneged on his part of the covenant. Yes, sir. But he said, I'm going to perform this. Oh, man, as a matter of fact, that is why, is why Israel is still walking around today. Because the Lord going to perform that oath that he swore to our forefathers. Because if not, we would be dead. We wouldn't exist. Go ahead. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. And will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. He said, and through your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. This is why I'm doing this, Isaac. Go ahead. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my law. He said, Abraham obeyed my voice. Not Abraham sacrificed unto me. Not Abraham's faith was great. And that's all he had was great faith. He said, Abraham obeyed my voice. He kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. We talking about Abraham. And if Abraham, all nations going to be blessed through Abraham, then you got to do what Abraham did. You got to be faithful, but at the same time, you got to obey the voice of the Lord too. You got to keep his charge, his commandments, his statutes, his laws. Same thing. Now, let's go to uh, Luke 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 5. Luke 1, and uh, we're going to pick it up at verse 5, because he told Abraham to walk before him and be perfect, and then he turned around and told Isaac that Abraham kept his commandments and his laws. We're going to see what else, who else walked before the Lord blameless. Luke, Luke 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 5. Go ahead. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Uh -huh. And they were both righteous before God, 
walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. It said that they were both righteous before God. This is what we've been talking about, about walking in righteousness. He said, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. Because this is how you are blameless. It is about walking in the commandments and in the ordinances of the Lord. If you do these things, then you walk before the Lord blameless, without blemish. This is how you uh, present yourself holy and acceptable. Now, let's go to Psalms uh, 19, and we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Psalms 19, and we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Being holy is not based on just talk. Your actions have to be holy more than your talk has to be holy. We can fool each other with, with, with smooth talk and, and holy talk, but then if our actions are not in line with what we're saying, then it's gonna, the truth going to come out. The truth going to come out by your actions. You can say whatever. But by our actions, how we really are, it's going to show. You got to, your works have to be holy. They have to be blameless. Not only your praises with your mouth, but also your works. Psalms 19 and verse 7. Go ahead. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise to simple. Now he said the law of the Lord is perfect. If the law of the Lord is perfect and the Lord commanded Abraham to walk before him and be perfect, that tells me that Abraham had to keep the law. And anybody else that's going to be perfect and walk before the Lord blameless and holy, you got to keep the law. If you do not, then you are not blameless and you are not walking holy before the Lord. That is the simplest thing in the world. But People come along and say, well, you know, the Lord nailed the, the commandments to the cross. Then, then, then the whole creation is, is gone. Ain't none of us getting in the kingdom. He took away the very thing that he gave you to cause you to walk perfect and blameless. He took the commandments away. So how, so how, 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 can, you walk, how can you walk perfect and blameless now if the Lord took the commandments away? You can't. That means you walking around in the imagination of your own mind, which means that's probably going to lead to your death. That don't even make sense. The same laws and commandments he gave all the forefathers so they could uh, live forever, the same ones we got to keep if we want to live forever. We got to stop dealing with, with stuff that don't make sense. The law of the Lord is perfect. Whether you want it to be perfect or not, the scriptures say it is perfect. And it converts the soul. That is how you are converted. Now, let's go to uh, Matthew 5 and verse 44. Because we want to see if anything changed when the Lord came on the scene. When the Lord came in the flesh, did he change anything? Matthew 5 and 44. I'm sorry to tell you that the message is going to be the same. It is not going to change whatsoever. Matthew 5 and 44. Go ahead. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. See, the Lord came along and he, and, and he even broke it down further. That's why he said it have been said, you know, thou should not kill, but you can't hate your brother without a cause or you in the danger of that same, same judgment of one that kill. The Lord said, yeah, I've been said thou should not commit adultery. But if you look upon a woman and lust after her in your mind, then you commit, you commit adultery in your mind without physically doing it. The Lord even broke it down even further. And now he's breaking it down even further. He's saying, look, love your enemies. It's easy to love somebody that love you, and it's easy to hate your enemies. You don't have no, no hard feelings about hating somebody that you don't like. But, hey, he said you got to love your enemies now. You got to pray for the ones that despitefully use you. Go ahead. That you may be the children of your father which is in heaven. 
For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and send it rain on the just and on the unjust. Hey, the father, he sent the rain on the just and unjust. So if the father causes the rain on the just and unjust, and you want to be a child of the father, then you can't hate your enemies. You got to love your enemies. That's a difficult thing sometimes. But if you want to be perfect and blameless before God, that's, that's what we got to do. We don't want to talk about this because then you have to change the person that you are. Go ahead. For if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? Hey, publicans and sinners love them that, that you know, they love people back that love them. So what? No matter. You got to be better than that. Go ahead. And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Okay, they do that too. But you got to be better than them. That's why he said if your, if your righteousness don't exceed the righteousness of scribes and Pharisees, you ain't got nothing coming. Scribes and Pharisees at least kept the Sabbath and showed up on the feast days. Go ahead. Be ye therefore perfect. Wait a minute. He said what, brother? Be ye therefore perfect. Oh, same message, huh? Same message that Abraham got. He's telling them, be ye, there, be ye therefore perfect. Go ahead. Even as your father which is in heaven he is said, perfect. He said, even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. You want to be like your father in heaven? You got to strive to be perfect. The message don't change. I'm sorry to tell you that it don't. It's the same message. Let's go to 2 Kings 20, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. We want to see, uh, we want to look at a righteous king that sat on the throne and because this king was righteous before the Lord, the Lord sent a blessing his way. I just want to show you what uh, uh, being right before the Lord can get you. Second Kings 20 and we gonna pick it up at verse one. Go ahead. In those days were Hezekiah sick unto death and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Now, uh, uh, Hezekiah was the king at the time, and the Lord sent the prophet and said, Hey, you know, you, you're about to die. Get your house in order. Go ahead. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before before thee in truth and with the perfect heart. See, now Hezekiah is going to pray for his life. He said, hey, Lord, remember how I've walked before you in truth and with a perfect heart. Go ahead. And have done that which is good in thy sight. Uh-huh. And Hezekiah wept sore. See, Hezekiah knew he did the will of the Lord. He wasn't going off solo. He did what the Lord required. Go ahead. And it came to pass, before Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus said the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, and I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord, uh -huh. and I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee in this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Now you see that? Hezekiah was a true servant of God, and he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord heard him, and he sent the prophet right back and said, I'm going to give you 15 more years. I'm going to heal you and extend your life. But Hezekiah said, hey, I walk before you in truth and with a perfect heart. We're going to have to skip that, 2 Timothy. Let's go to Hebrew 13, and... Uh, that's all right. Go to 2 Timothy 3 and 13, brother. We're we, we just going to read it. 2 Timothy 3 and 13. When you get it, brother, go ahead. But even men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, uh -huh. deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the thing which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, uh -huh. knowing of whom thou hast learned them, uh -huh. and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. He said that thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Go ahead which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith. 
which is able to make thee wise unto salvation. Be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. The only way to understand that is through the Holy Scriptures. Go ahead. Through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. All scriptures is given by the inspiration of God. Not some of the scriptures, but all of them. Go ahead. And it's profitable for doctrine, uh -huh. for reproof, uh -huh. for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And your doctrine, when you reprove somebody, when you correct with your instructions, of course, if you're talking about salvation, it all should come from the Holy Scriptures. That is what they are here for. Go ahead. That the man of God may be perfect. That the man of God may be what, brother? Perfect. The same story. Even in the days of Paul, same story, that the man of God may be perfect. Go ahead. Thoroughly furnished unto all Thoroughly good works. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The story don't change. You got to be right. One more scripture, Hebrews 13 and verse 20. Hebrews 13 and verse 20. We got to stop trying to find loopholes and start dealing with the scriptures. That's the only way the Lord is going to uh, uh, give us eternal life. Hebrews 13 and verse 20. Go ahead. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead of our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Uh-huh. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Uh-huh. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Go ahead. Work it in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And that is good. So now, that is my lesson. Be holy and acceptable before God. I thank you for uh, joining us here on the Word of Truth. And I hope you'll join us again next week where we'll be bringing you another topic from the Bible. As always, please read your Bibles and keep the commandments of God. Thank you and have a good evening.